he said hallelujah 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 thank you jesus welcome brothers and sisters this morning the morning that the lord has given unto us the morning that we need to share the word of god because um, it's the day that the lord has made so i will urge you to invite brothers and sisters to come and join us so that we can worship god together we can listen to what god has to say today in our lives so that we can nourish our soul because uh, we have been nourishing our lives with food, normal, normal food from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And today is the day that we want to nourish our souls. We want to nourish our souls. So through this, we will listen to what the Lord wants us to do. talk about and before we start everything we want just to worship together so I wish you know the song I'll be singing and I want you to join me when I am singing the song hope God will bless you and uh, it will be a blessing also to you thank you Jesus thank you Father Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Jesus, hold my hand. Oh, I need you every heart. Through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy power. He my feeble bleed. Oh, dear Lord, look down on me when I kneel in prayer. Oh, I hope to meet you today. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. Hold my hand. For I need thee every heart. Oh, through this pilgrim land. Protect me by thy power. He might be boldly. Oh, holy Lord, look down on me. And I kneel in prayer. Oh, I hope to meet you then. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me, lead me safely through this sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, hold me each day. Oh, you help me to do the best, the best thing I can. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Oh, Jesus, hold my hand. 
for I need the every heart through this pilgrim land protect me by thy hand oh, my feeble plea feeble plea Oh dear Lord, oh look down on me When I kneel in prayer I hope to meet you there Blessed Jesus hold my tremble hand Let me travel in the light divine Hallelujah That I may see the blessed way Thank you, Jesus. Keep me by. I sing redemption songs someday for you, Lord. I will be a soldier brave and true. And every firm take a stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hold my hand. Oh, I need. Oh, every heart. Oh, through this pilgrim land, protect me by thy mouth. Oh, my people free. Oh, dear Lord, oh, do God know me when I. He pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you glory. I give you honor. Stand on this platform, Lord. Take control. Father, listen to our feeble plea, Lord, in your presence. Hallelujah. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I hope you are blessed by the song because it blesses me a lot. So hopefully, hopefully, you have been blessed as well. So, God bless you. Today, we're going to read in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 12. We will read in the book of Genesis chapter 12. And uh, this is Genesis chapter 12. Hallelujah, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. I want somebody to give me a sign telling me that I am okay and the microphone is list is clear. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So, give me a sign. Let me know that you are on. And uh, everything is clear. To God be the glory. So, I said we would talk about... Uh, Abraham. We will talk about Abraham when the Lord visited him in the time. Don't forget, our topic is what did the Lord say? We're still continuing the same topic. We haven't yet changed it because we want to exactly know and encourage somebody there that there is some other ways which God said and uh, 
we children of God, have, we have forgotten what the Lord said. So we want just to remind each other of the word the Lord said. So this topic started on Wednesday and uh, we took it from the book of Luke chapter 6 verse 46 till 49 where it says that why do you call me Lord, Lord and you don't do what I say. So that's the only topic we are we are talking about today to god be the glory hope you are there and uh, we we will continue with the message i want you to be inviting people i want you to be telling people that uh, christian brethren center is uh, live back and service so that we can exhort somebody, so that we can uh, correct somebody, so that we can re rebuke somebody, so that we can also make sure that we are going through the right direction with our Lord Jesus Christ, that our relationship with Him is still intact, that we haven't lost anything in God's presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. To God be all the glory and honor. Oh, glory, glory, glory. So, we said we're going to read in the book of Genesis, chapter 12. But I want just to talk something before we start. And the thing I want to talk is about about something very important which can lead us into what we are going to talk about today. And what we are going to talk about today is in James chapter 2 verse 19. 26 and I'm going to read now before I go to Genesis chapter 12 I'm going to read this now because it will help us to understand what the Lord wants us to hear today hallelujah hallelujah so may God be glorified hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. So. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father, come at your throne. I give you glory. I give you honor. And I give you praise. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the creator of the universe, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are the greatest God we serve. You are the one who was, who is, and who still be there forever and ever. Oh, glory, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Who can be like you? Who will be like you? Because you are the greatest God we serve. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So, as I said, we're going to read in the book of Genesis, chapter 12. But we want to read first in Genesis, chapter 2, 19 to 26. The Bible says, you believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know? A foolish man, that faith without works is dead. I'll repeat on that place. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know? A foolish man, 
that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. So what I wanted to say here is just on the point of saying Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God and he was called the friend of God my brothers my sisters wherever you are today I want to tell you something do you know you may be the friend of a president you may be the friend of the king. You may be the friend of the queen. That doesn't matter. That will not take you anywhere. But the only important thing, if you are a friend of God, I'm telling you, you have it all. You have it all. Why? Because if God says that this is my friend, it surpasses all the calculation you may have for you to be a friend of a president. Because being a friend of God is to be a friend with everything. Is to be a friend to somebody who does anything. Is to be with a friend who doesn't know impossibilities. is to be with a friend who doesn't have negativity in his life. is to have a friend who doesn't have doubts. is to have a friend who doesn't fear. is to have a friend who can say a word and that word remains. You may be a friend of a president. You may be a friend of a king. You may be a friend of a queen. You may be a friend of a prime minister. But the people you are friending with, they will not be what I've just mentioned now. They will not be what you really need in your life. Because despite you being a friend of somebody, who is known, you need something which is more powerful than even the friend you may have. And that is God. And that's why God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, now we are on our words now. He said to him, Abraham, Abraham, you have to leave your kindred. You have to leave your place. You have to go somewhere where I will show you. To the land I will show you. I want you just to go and read. I will not read here. I want you to go and read. When you are there, you can read it now because you will understand exactly what we are on. Let me remind you that this Abraham is the person who came from idol worshippers. The people who didn't know God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. The people who didn't know God. The people who didn't understand about God. 
and they, are, they, they were called wealthy people. And if you look very carefully in the word of God, you understand that this money, where they were taking the money from, it was when they were selling, his father was making small idols, the gods they were praising at that moment. Through those gods he was making, he was selling to people and people were worshipping now those things. So that was how they became wealthy. They became rich because of selling the small god they were worshipping. So they were idol worshippers. This Abraham was an idol worshipper. Oh, glory be to God. So this idol worshipper, from this tribe of an idol worshipper, God went. God went and picked somebody from that idol worshippers. Talk to him, telling him what he wanted him to do. Just imagine somebody who doesn't know God. Somebody who has never met God. But God went and picked him from where he was. Let me say he was in the pit of hell. Like some of us where God picked us. Like some of us where God took, took us from. He took us from the alcoholism. He took us, we were being drug addicted. We were fornicators. We were sinners, all of us. And Jesus came and took us from the power of darkness and gave us what we have now. For us to be called Christians today. For us to be beating our chest and saying that I am a child of God. It was because somebody went and picked us from where we was in the pit of hell. In the place where we were chained. But God went into there and picked us from there. That's how he went and picked Abraham from there. You know some other times in our lives. We have to forsake something. We have to forsake some other issues. We have to leave some other things. Or maybe I should say we have to abandon other things in our lives. When I say abandoning, this is the place where problems start. Because when we are talking about abandoning, we are talking about leaving certain things in our lives, including our families. Glory be to God. So, <laughs> this is where things get worse. In the things of God, there is certain points that we have to abandon some other issues and we have to leave some other people. When I say some other people, including your family, because your family also can drag you down for you not to do the work of God. Some other family members can drag you down for you not to accomplish what God has given you to. So that's why I said in, in our lives, certain points, when we are working for God, when God calls us, when God gives us a task, when God tells me that, no, you are my child, I have taken you from the pit of hell and I want you to do the work for me. This is the work I want you to do. There is certain things we have to be departed from. Let me ask you one question. Since you became a Christian, since you became a born again, you have realized that some of your friends, some of the friends you had, you had, have just left you without even a reason. They are running away slowly by slowly, away from you. Why are they running away slowly from you? Because they have seen something in you. Since you started speaking about God, knowing about the message of the cross, knowing about the work Jesus finished at the cross, there is certain things that put you aside from other people and those other people because we know these days people they are always saying that I know everything I can do it you don't need to tell me what to do I'm enough by myself so when you're telling them about the word of God when you're telling them about about the things you have now have a revelation in you about the message of the cross because everything comes up to the message of the cross now, the message of the cross gives us a latitude with the Holy Spirit to tell us everything that this is wrong and this is right. And when 
we know that we are now equipped with the word of God as the message of the cross tells us that we are here by the grace of God. We live by faith through works. We are coming in the presence of God direct without passing through another person. Because God has given us access to him 24-7. Not to pass through any pastor, not to pass through any evangelist, not to pass through someone else. But on your own, you can call upon God and God will answer you. Because that is what Jesus came to do, to finish on earth. For you to stop looking at a person and saying that this is my salvation, but you have to take your eyes off the person and put your eyes on, on the cross. Because on the cross, that's where there is your salvation. On the cross, that's where there is whatever you're looking for. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Kings, and thank you, Lord of Lords. I praise you and I honor you. You are the great God who never changed you and is to be there forever and ever. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, let me say in this way. After God called Abraham from that country, he had to leave his land, he has to leave his family. He has to leave the small god they were worshipping, the idols. He has to leave all the friends and families to embark on the journey to where God has directed him. Glory be to God. Just imagine you are in your house. You have never known a person or maybe like me, you have never known me. And then I come to you and tell you that I want you to leave this place and go to a certain place. That's where you'll be starting living then. Would you believe me? You have never known me, you don't know me, and these days you know the situation where there is so much things happening, evil. Would you believe me? But this Abraham, he has never heard about God. He has never heard about the God of uh, creator of the universe whatsoever. But God appeared to him and told him that you got to leave everything. You got to leave the gods you worship, the idols you worship. You got to leave your father. You got to leave your mother. You got to leave everything you have in your family. And go to a certain place where I'll tell you. When God called you, he wants you to leave some other things in your life. He wants you to leave some certain people in your life. It's biblical. Nobody should tell you that this is not what the word of God says. The word of God says so. Because certain people will drag you back. Certain people will stop you marching. Certain people will stop your steps to go further. Certain people will just hold you on, never let you go. And the work which God has given you, it will fail because if you look behind you, you have left your mother, you have left your father, you have left your siblings, you have left everybody you love, friends and families. But because of the work of God you are going through, if you look and focus on what God has given you, you will succeed. But if you look behind and see what is behind you, what you're going to leave, you will go back and stop working for God. That means the relationship with you and God will not be well. Why? Because you have looked behind. Let me give you an example of something. Do you know the children of Israel when they were in the captivity in, in, in Egypt? God had to kill every firstborn of Egyptians. Hallelujah. And do you know what happens? When God was wanted to kill the firstborn of every Egyptian, there were certain Egyptians whom God visited them. 
whom they had friend of Israelites. They heard about this Jesus. They said, no, what we are worshipping is not a real God. But we need to be with these people. When they leave their families, they went into the camp of the children of Israel. Do you know those people, their firstborn were saved. Those people, their firstborn did, wasn't dead, was, was not dead. Why? Because God protected them. Because they realized that with the, the place we are, it's not our place. We have to go where there is real God. So the Egyptians, other Egyptians, they had to leave their families and go to the camp of Israelites. And when they went to the camp of Israelites, their children didn't die. And do you know what happens when the children of Israel were leaving? These people, they had to live with the children of Israel. Do you know what they left behind? They left their mothers, they left their fathers, they left their families, friends, and the area where they were surrounded of, they knew it well, but they had to leave everything and go with the children of Israel. So the children of Israel, they didn't go alone. They had a company of different tribes with them. Hallelujah. So can you imagine what the work of God demands? So if the work of God demands that, we have to leave certain things in our lives. We have to leave certain things in our lives. Don't cling on something which will drag you back. Don't cling on something which will will delay your match because there is certain people in your life they are there just to delay your match they are there just to delay you not to do what God has given you to do and that's why when Abraham and Lot they reach at a certain point they had to depart each other why because someone was delaying the match of somebody so it has to reach at a certain point that you have to depart from your family. Despite they will say that it's wrong. Because they want you to be there. They want to control you. They want you to tell you what to do. Sometimes you go to church where you know that this church there is no, a, there is no a good doctrine. There is no God in this church. This church we just go because it's a Sunday service. We are getting used. We go to church. We come back. We go to church. We come back. We go to church. We come back. But there is no any God in this. And because you have been dragged by the family, you have to go there. But God is telling us today, we have to leave certain things. Because if you acknowledge God that, no, this is the point that I need to leave. Because I, won't be, I don't want to be dragged by the family. But I want to look on the things of God and do what God has sent me to do. And you will do exactly what the Lord had told you to do. Because Abraham had to leave the country and go somewhere. To go and fight for God. To go and live for God. That's the only important thing, is to live for God. My brother, my sister, do you live for God? My brother, my sister, do you really want to work for God? Because if you want to work for God, there is a certain things in your life you have to leave them. There is certain things in your life you have to forget them. There is certain things in your life you have to abandon them. I know it's painful. Because it's not easy. All of us, we are liars. All of us, we do things which doesn't glorify God. But God is telling us today that we have to leave certain things. As I told you, we are still on the theme of what did the Lord say? The Lord said to Abraham. Let me read on this place only. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham. Get thee out of your country. And from your kindred. And from your father's house. And to a land that I will show you. And I will make you of you a great nation. Glory be to God. <laughs> and I will make you. I will make of you a great nation. 
The nation which God made Abraham has changed the world and exists even unto this hour. In fact, this nation, Israel, still has a great part to play which will take place in the coming kingdom age. And I will bless you and I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. According to the scriptures, to bless means to increase. The builders of the Tower of Babel sought to make us a name, whereas God took he this man who forsook all and made his name great. For you to become great, you have to forsook all. You have to forget some other things. Glory be to God. You know some other people, they don't become great. It's because they are clinging on something which is not even give them value in their lives, which is not even adding plus in their lives, but they cling on it. They don't want to let it go. But God is telling us here that we have to let some other things go. We have to let certain friends go. We have to let certain family members go. Because they are dragging us back. Instead of you going forward, you are not going forward because they are there. They are just dragging you back. You are supposed to be one foot forward, but you are now one foot backwards. You are supposed to be two foot forward, now you are three foot backwards. Why? Because there is certain people who are there just to break you, just to stop your march, just to stop you walking for forward, just to stop you climbing the ladder. Why? Because they don't want your success, your, your, you to succeed. Glory be to God. But Abraham here is telling us a story that we have to understand. He says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make you your name great. Glory be to God. So, and you shall be a blessing. So if you leave, let me say, if you leave certain issues in your, in your life, if you abandon certain family members who are dragging you back, if you leave certain people in your life, or you leave certain habits in your life, God will make you or maybe God will bless you and make your name great. And then he will not live there. He said, I shall be a you shall be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. Glory be to God. If you want to be a blessing, you have to leave certain things. Abraham had to leave his kindred, has to leave his country, has to leave his father, has to leave his mother has to leave his brothers, has to leave his sisters, has to leave everything and the gods they were worshipping. For him to be a great nation, for him to be blessed, and for him to be a blessing to others. You can only be a great nation, you can only be blessed, and you can only be a blessing to other people when you leave certain things. In your life. Living certain things is painful. But through the work of God. Through, through this pilgrimage. If you listen to my song at the beginning. I said. Protect me by thy hand. Protect me by thy power. Hear my feeble plea. When you are calling upon God to hear your feeble plea. Is to understand your feeling of saying that I need to work for you. I am here. But these things are blocking me to go further. These things are refusing me to work for God. These people, they are dragging me back not to work for God. But I need to reach to some other people. I need to be blessed. I need to be a blessing to certain people. So for you to be a blessing to certain people, you have to leave certain issues. You have to abandon certain issues. You have to forget some other things. Hallelujah. It says, concerns 
itself with the greatest blessing of all. It is the glory of Abraham's faith. God will give this man the meaning of salvation, which is justification by faith, which would come about through the Lord Jesus Christ and what Christ would do on the cross. Concerning this, Jesus said of Abraham, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. That is in John chapter 8 verse 56. Glory be to God. So, if you leave certain things in your, fam in your, in your life, including your family, people who are, who are blocking you to go further, people who are stopping you to work for God, uh, God says, and I will bless them who blesses you. So, those who are blocking you not to work for God, they will not be blessed. But those who allow you, who support you, who are with you to work for God, God will bless them because they are blessing you. Glory be to God. I think I'm talking to somebody. I think I'm talking to somebody. There is certain people you know in your life that these people, they are there just to destroy me. These people, they are there just to drag me back. And these people, they are there to support me, to bless me through the work of God, to push me forward, to help me to climb the ladder, to help me to reach to certain souls, to help me to preach the message of the cross, to help me to preach Jesus and him crucified. And you know that these people, they are there, but there is other people who are dragging me out of it. And they're trying for me to stop doing the work of God. So those are the things God wants you to leave. Those are the things God wants you to stop working with them. Even if they are your family. If you have the feeling of saying, I don't want to abandon anything, you will miss God. Because Abraham, if he could look behind and see the family, and see the father, and see the kindred, and see the land he's, he's, he's living, and see the richness of his father, the way he was worthy, he could not leave the, the country. He could not leave those land. But he left without looking all those things. He focused on the call of God. Certain person has been called by God. But you today, you haven't yet started working for God. Do you know why? Because you're looking behind and see what you're going to leave. Certain people, God is calling you each and every day to help the ministry. To help us preaching the message of the cross to the nation. To help reach, to help us reach to those areas, rural areas where there is no social media. We have pastors who walk around and they need just financial support. And we have been asking, asking, go to our page. You will see where you can help us so that you can give those pastors financial support for them to go into those areas and help those who doesn't have technology, those, those who don't have social media, those who doesn't have some other means of listening to the message. We have pastors who are walking by foot, who are using public transport to reach to certain areas. But we need support on our own. We can't do it. The only thing I do, I do things with my own money. Certain people, small people who help me. But I need all of you whom God has touched to help me because you are there for a reason. You are there for a reason. A reason like this to help us reach to those souls. So Abraham had to leave the country walking by foot to go and reach some other souls so that you can be blessed through him. So that we today, we can be called the descendants of Abraham. We are the descendants of Abraham. We are the fruit of faith of Abraham. Why the fruit of faith of Abraham? Because Abraham decided to leave his family. But you, you are refusing to leave your family. If we are called today descendants of Abraham, because Abraham decided to leave his family. Because they were dragging him behind. He, they were idol worshippers. They were people who doesn't believe in God. My brother, my sister, this is the moment we have to understand what God is telling us. We have to stop calling him Lord, 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 and never do what he said. That's what he's complaining about. God is complaining because 
We are always calling him Lord, Lord, Lord and never do what he says. What does God say? God said, and I will bless them who blesses you. And curse him who curses you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm telling you, my brothers, my sisters. There is certain things that can just open something in your, in your life. And you start wondering what is going on in my life. Just for you to do one principle. And all of a sudden, things start working. Without you knowing. Just a principle, a small principle, not bigger. Because in God's work, there is nothing bigger for you to do so that God can be on your side. It's only obeying. It's only listening to what he said. It's only doing what he said. I know the reason why God gave me this topic. And we're going to talk this topic until God says enough. Brothers and sisters, God took us from drug addiction. God took us from alcoholism. God took us from uh, being liars. God took us from the pit of hell. Fornicators. Robbers. Thieves. So many things we were doing. But God went there and destroyed the power of darkness. And took us out of there. And tell us that today, Brother Jordan, I want you to go to a certain place for you to start working for me. And we have to leave certain issues in our life. We have to leave certain people in our lives. We have to leave certain friends in our lives. Let me tell you my, my own life because I don't like talking about other people's life. I talk about my own life. Do you know the way I live in my life? It's not being proud of myself, but I'm just telling you what I am. If I'm not in my house, I am at work. If I am not at work, I am in my house. If I am not in my house, I am on this platform preaching the word of God. In my life, if I am talking to a certain person, it's to my children. If not to my children, to my wife. If not to my wife, to my family. To my family through phones. And if I travel, I travel, I come back home. I don't sleep out because I don't like sleeping into somebody's house. That's the way I am. The only place I do being comfortable sleeping is only one place where I go. And when that place, I reach that place, everybody knows that this is the place where he's always comfortable. I don't have a friend in my life. If I'm telling you this, you will think that I'm lying, but I don't have a friend. My only friend is my wife and children. And uh, my name hasn't yet changed. I'm, um, I can't say that I'm not a human being. I can't say that I don't like talking to friends. But I disciplined myself for me to work for God. I have to separate myself to certain issues because it's just part of distraction. Because you don't know the person you are with, unless God guides you to go to that person. Certain people are not supposed to come into your life. Certain people are not supposed to be in your life. And God will try his best to remove them. But do you know what we do, we people of God? 
we cling to that. We force ourselves to be loved. We force ourselves to be friends with certain people. When God is saying, no, 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 we don't want to listen to that and we just want to, what we think is right to us. What I want is to have friends around me. What I want is to be talking to some other people. What I want is to be going to certain house and going this house and this house and this house. That's what you think most of the time. You forget that God says, get out of there. Leave your land, leave your kindred, leave your father, leave your father's house, leave your family, and go to a place where I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, and you'll be a blessing to certain people. And I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who curse you. But what we do, we don't want the promises of God. We don't want what God said into our lives to happen because we want to see what is at present. What is at present? I have to go out to talk to my friends. I have to leave to go some certain places to go and talk to my friends. I have to visit a certain family. I have to visit this and that. No, I'm bored in the house. I want to go. You are bored in the house. Why are you bored in the house when you have everything in the house? You have the word of God to read. You have a corner where you can go and kneel down and pray to God. Why are you bored in the house? Tell me something. I don't understand when you say you are bored to God be the glory. I don't understand when you say you are bored in the house. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's continue. He says, And I'll bless them who blesses you. To bless Israel or any believer for that matter guarantees the blessings of God. And curse him who curses you. To curse Israel or any believer guarantees that one will be cursed by God. Hallelujah. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. Hallelujah. These are the promises God gave to Abraham. God said it to Abraham. God said these words to Abraham, and Abraham listened to that. And on the verse 4, he said, So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him. How many people have we departed? After the Lord has spoken unto us. How many of you or how many of us we have departed as the Lord spoken to us? How many of us have we departed after the Lord has said, leave this, leave that? This person is not good for you. This friend of yours is not good for you. What you are doing is not good for you. This is wrong. I, God, I said no to this. How many of us we still cling on certain issues which are dragging us back not to work for God? My brothers, my sisters, we have read in the book of Genesis chapter 12 and we have heard what God said. I hope I'm speaking to someone. I hope I am talking to a child of God. Give you glory, give you honor, and I give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Now, these five minutes, I want you, if you need a prayer, that you want to start again fresh with God because He's calling you to depart.
from certain things which you have cleaned to it for a long time. Just call. Call. I will not embarrass you. I will not embarrass you. Or even you cannot call live. You call even any time. I will help you. Just to do that. Because we are here to help each other. We are here to do what the Lord said. Because I said the Lord is not happy because we are not doing what he said. And we ask the question, what did the Lord say that we doesn't do? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You know, this is the time that we have to understand exactly that God needs us back. Don't hide in your heart. You know where you've gone wrong. But we keep on calling Lord, Lord, Lord. That's the only word he's repeating. Why do you keep on calling me Lord, 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 and you never do what I say? And in John chapter 15, verse 14, the Bible says, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I commanded you. And we, where we have just read now in James chapter 2, the Bible says, Abraham was the friend of God. Brothers and sisters, don't we need to be friends with God? I'm telling you, you can be a friend with a president. You can be a friend with a king. You can be a friend with a prime minister. You can be a friend with a queen. But that friendship will not take you anywhere. But if me, I say I'm a friend of God, I have it all. And I want somebody today to make a decision to be a friend of God. And to be a friend of God is to do whatsoever the Lord said. That's why we are starting from the beginning. I told you, I think it's on Friday, that let us go back to the beginning. Let us go back to the beginning. Because if we go to the beginning, we will understand exactly what the Lord said. May God bless you. Once again, thanks for those who were following me. God bless you all. Continue to follow us, like our page, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will never, ever let you down. Our YouTube channel is SLBN TV. Just subscribe there and we will never let you down. May God bless you and have a lovely, lovely Sunday service. To those who are attending churches, may God bless you. But the only thing I'm going to ask you is that look for a place where they preach the message of the cross, where they, there is a good doctrine, where they preach the word of God without fear, without hindrance, without compromising it, without favor and with conviction. May God bless you and have a lovely day. Thank you.